don't know how I would view it as in eating meat. I mean, I think animals should be respected and all, and all that, so... Can you respect them if you're killing them unnecessarily? That's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does that constitute respect? Hey everyone, just before we dive back into the debate, I want to tell you all about Brilliant, who is sponsoring today's video. If you're wanting to learn new skills and explore topics around science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, well then Brilliant is catered for you. This is because Brilliant is a fun and interactive learning platform which offers thousands of lessons which are crafted by award-winning professionals from places such as MIT and Google. Brilliant's learning style is hands-on and engaging, meaning it's not just about watching a lecture video, but is instead about actively being involved in the learning process. This means you can develop your critical thinking and problem-solving skills in a more effective and meaningful way. This means that Brilliant doesn't just equip you with knowledge, but also equips you with transferable skills that go beyond the lessons themselves. So to try out everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash earthlinged or click the link in my description where you'll also be able to get 20% off a premium annual subscription as well. But now let's get back to the debate at hand, but a huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring Sponsoring today's video. So hi Pablo, it's oh. a real pleasure to meet you. My name is Ed. Today I'm at UC Riverside and I have a, I have a banner that says, give me your best argument for not being vegan. You, you very kindly sat down, which I appreciate immensely. But what is your response to the banner? Uh, well, to be honest, I've had friends that have been, do you want to take that? Uh, I've, yeah. I've had friends that were vegan before. So, I mean, most of them said, said that like, it was good for like your health. I've seen some bodybuilders that are like, oh, yeah. s like huge. <laughs> Intimidating, right? Yeah, and they, they're full on vegan, so I definitely see it. Uh, I don't know about myself, but I can see the benefits and I think it's possible. Yeah. And so what would hold you back from, from trying it, do you think? I, honestly, I've been eating meat like all my life and I don't know. I eat it like every day, so I don't know how I would go about cutting like everything off. I guess it's just the first thing to do is, is find the reasons to do so, find the conviction to do so, and, to, and maybe we can work together now five, ten minutes or so to see if that's possible. Do you think that the longevity of an action justifies it continuing? Undeniably, you've done it your whole life, but does that in and of itself make, make it acceptable to continue doing so? Well, I mean, it depends on the, on like the context that you're taking. Like if someone's been doing bad things their whole lives doesn't mean they should continue on doing it. So I guess that's an argument you're trying to make. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how I would view it as in eating meat. I mean, I think animals should be respected and all, and all that, so. Can you respect them if you're killing them unnecessarily? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, Does that constitute respect? I guess not. I guess you're using my own words against me. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, like, I, I like where you're going Thank with this. I appreciate that now. What do you think then? Is there a moral concern around what we do to animals? I, I guess so, because like I've seen videos, like obviously McDonald's, like they treat their, or they used to, I don't know what it, what it's going to nowadays, but you know, we've seen some stuff where like, it's crazy what they do to them. Yeah, and even outside of the context of McDonald's, just the, the general farming of animals. You know, McDonald's aren't sourcing their animals from special farms. They may be McDonald's farms, but the standards are the same as they are for pretty much any farm, more or less. So. Is there just a general moral concern about the unnecessary harm of an animal? Like, is that fundamentally something we should be concerned about from a moral perspective? Well, uh, I think like with, yeah, going plant based, I feel like that's definitely like erupted over the couple of years. I think there is like a moral dilemma in how we treat the animals and it should be a concern. Um, I don't think they should be treated in that way because I've seen videos of pigs just like being toppled on one of each other, like chickens can't even walk and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that stuff's pretty horrible. And it, again, to stress this point, it is it's standard practice. You know, that the chickens that you're describing there, I think that's like now how 99.9% .9 of farm chickens in the US are raised. Like it's just, it's overwhelming. And I suppose with that in mind, is there a contradiction to, you know, eating meat every day, like you said that you did, but also being against what is just the standard ubiquitous practice of what happens to animals. Is there a contradiction between what you think is wrong, but what you do on a daily basis? I mean, I, yeah, I guess it's kind of like hypocritical, but like, I think what most people think is, well, I'm not doing it to the animals, but you're kind of supporting it every time you're buying meat in a sense. So yeah, there is kind of a hypocritical condition there. Yeah, I mean, you're right to say that we're not directly doing it, but you're also right to say that the only reason it happens is because we pay for it to happen, because we buy it. If we stop buying it, it would stop happening. So whilst we're not directly doing the bad things, it only exists because of us. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So what if like I just bought from local farmers who weren't doing that? Would that be justifiable in your eyes? Well, I mean, we like to appeal to this idea of local farming, but the, 
and again, not to use your words against you too much, right? Maybe a little bit. But the idea that something is more moral simply because it's local doesn't really add up when we consider that every farm is local to someone. Even the worst farms you could possibly think of is someone's local farm. So it being local is not what's relevant, but I think more important than that, I guess what you're trying to insinuate is that there are some farms where the terrible practices we're discussing don't necessarily happen in the ways we're discussing. And that's, that's probably more what you're trying to say. And that's a fair point. I would be wrong to say that every single system of farming is the same. Because undeniably, there are some systems of farming, albeit, you know, small examples and not, you know, standard practice, but there are some systems of farming that don't have the worst of the worst practices. And you would say that they are better, right? Mm -hmm. But being better than something as abjectly horrible and, is, and immoral as factory farming is hardly a glowing commendation, right? Just because you're, you know, better than the worst of the worst doesn't mean that you are in and of yourself good. And that's the question. I guess fundamentally the reason we would say supporting these kind of better farms is good is because it's reducing the harm that's caused to animals. And in, in essence, I suppose what we're acknowledging is that the reduction of animal suffering is morally preferable. You know, if we can reduce animal harm, then morally we should. And I think that's kind of the conclusion that I came to, which is what led me to veganism. And the reason that led me to veganism is because if I had the choice between supporting this horrendous behemoth, which is factory farming, systems of farming which are better than factory farming, or plant-based farming. If my objective is to reduce animal suffering, then the plant-based farming is the fullest extension of the moral code that I have. Because whilst this system of animal farming in the middle may be better, it still contributes fundamentally to causing animals harm and, you know, and taking their life from them unnecessarily. So, bit of a mouthful that. But I guess the first question is, do you agree with the premise that reducing animal harm is morally preferable? Yes. I, I would say so, yeah. I mean, no one wants to, like, no one wants to see, difference. yeah. Okay. No one wants to see him, like, oh, I enjoy watching animals live like that or anything like that. Yeah. If you were talking about humans, it would be, like, another thing. Like, another thing. well, it's the same thing in my eyes. Yeah, I mean, reducing suffering where we can, human or non-human, is definitely preferable. Okay, so the second part of that question is, if we acknowledge that the reduction of animal suffering is preferable, out of the choices that we have, do you agree or disagree with me that the plant-based option is the one that's the fullest extension of that reducing animal suffering and harm? Well, I think we spoke about, like, how the first intention would be for you to, like, I guess, go with, like, where people are more, like, treating them better. But you said, you know, just because in a whole area where, like, they're being treated bad and they're treating them a little bit better, that doesn't constitute that, like, it's the best option. So I guess I, I would stick, like, in the middle there. I'm not sure about going full on. But, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Sure, sure. Yeah, of course. Why would you say that you're not sure about going full on? I just... I. I I'm not really sure. I don't know. I'm not very educated in the subject, no, no, no. but I, I don't think I could do it. Like, even if I tried, I think I would just give in. Well, and I guess the reason you say that now is because obviously um, you've sat down to talk with me and we've, and we've only been speaking for a short while, Pablo. So obviously, you know, I'm talking to you for 15 minutes, but you've been living the way that you've been living for two decades, you know, there or thereabouts, right? So it's, it would be impossible for me, or at least very hard for me to change two decades of living in, in 15 minutes. And so, of course, I, I can appreciate that right now you don't have that conviction to do so. And, and, and I guess the point is every vegan I've ever met, me included, and I said this to you off camera, actually, wishes they'd gone vegan sooner, right? And... Instantly, every vegan who is now vegan that I've met, myself included, always says that at some point they said they would never go vegan. I used to think veganism was extreme, militant, dogmatic, weird, freakish, all of the, all of the good words, right? And that's because I didn't understand the merits of doing it. Or even if I did understand the merits of doing it, I hadn't convinced myself of them being valid enough to justify me changing my life. And so look, right now I appreciate that's the case. But what I, what I think and what I strongly believe is that uh, most people agree with the foundations of veganism. You yourself do by wanting to reduce animal harm. And it's just about acknowledging that the foundations of veganism are important enough to get through that kind of like desire to continue eating animals. So the question then from that would be, why do you eat animals or animal products? I think it's just like the way like most people are raised, especially like where I come from. I come from like a very poor background where it's like, well, like the, the vegetables that are sold, like the markets are kind of like bad. So you have, right. you're, I mean, I grew up eating like chicken every now and then. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just, it's just like the way of life, how most people are raised. Like, yeah. I think enough people are going like, oh, let's just go full on vegan, like straight from when they're born. Sure, and that's right. But what about now? Obviously you're talking about in the past, like today, I don't know what you had for breakfast or if you had lunch yet, but let's say you did, or let's say the last time you bought an animal product, why did you buy it then? Uh, I usually don't do the shopping, but I mean, uh, to me, it tastes good. 
But when you say that, then you're also contributing to the animal harm. So it kind of now that I'm talking to you, it kind of makes me feel bad that I ate meat today. Why do you feel bad? Well, because you're kind of educating me more and like, oh, well, just because you may be consumed from a certain person, they're still doing a horrible thing. Sure. I, I don't know. You're giving me like a better perspective on yeah. this whole thing. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And I suppose the reason I asked the question is because fundamentally, yeah, the main reason why we eat the food we do is because we like it. We don't buy food that we don't like. Mm -hmm. We buy food that we do like. And so for most of us, and this was me as well before I was vegan, I bought the animal products I did because I liked how they tasted. So then the question becomes, what, does the enjoyment of that product morally justify what happens to the animals? Oh, you're giving me some good questions. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> you memorized all this? Oh, yeah, I've got some practice. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, well, if we take in a different context, you know, there's obviously like psychopaths, you know, they enjoy harming other people. Yeah. So you, I, I don't know why I'm helping you <laughs> in your <laughs> no, argument. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, that wouldn't be good either. Uh, I guess, I guess, I don't know, I'm not sure how to answer. Anyway, I answer it just seems wrong. Well, okay, let me rephrase that question then. What has higher value, your taste buds or the life of an animal? <laughs> oh, whoa, when you put it like that, I guess, you know, save the lives. Save lives, right? Yeah. And I guess fundamentally the reason I ask those questions is because those are the questions I had to ask myself. You know, I had the same, same approach as you. I liked how fried chicken was my number one favorite food and medium rare steak was my second favorite food halloumi was probably my third favorite food so i loved how these products tasted but then i asked the question well does my enjoyment of those products justify what happens to the animals and if it doesn't and i think that life has highly higher value than my taste buds where does that lead me you know that leads me to not buying these foods especially as you can still enjoy plant-based foods as well you're not giving up all of your taste it's just changing the foods that you like is, is your main argument for being vegan the animal cruelty that occurs within that spectrum and the fact that they're being, you know, I mean, it's part, I, I don't want to sound very bad, but I mean, like, that's basically how, like, nature, like, works, you know, like, it goes on and on, like, the cow eats the meat, like, and stuff like that, and there's, like, someone else. At the level that we're doing it, it's mass producing, but what are your main arguments for being vegan other than animal cruelty within the... Uh, system I guess you could call it. Well animal, animal use and animal exploitation is my primary reason for being vegan and it's what I like to speak about because I think it's most interesting and I think it's what it, it really strikes at the heart of why we do what we do the psychology behind it the philosophy behind it I really enjoy that but the environmental reasoning is strong really strong you know we, we, we continuously told that a plant based diet is better for the environment it's good for your health if you're eating a whole foods plant based diet you know it's good for people and the longevity of life reducing certain chronic disease risk and certain like that it's amazing but it always comes down to the animals for me and let me t tell you why let's say that a dog is walking past us now or any animals walking past us now, I would say that it's wrong to kick the dog or the other animal. And I wouldn't say it's wrong because doing so might hurt my foot. I say it's wrong because it's bad for the animal. It hurts the animal. So when I think about what we do to animals, it's not necessarily that it's bad for the environment, that plays a part. And it's definitely not that it's bad for me. It's just that because there's someone else there who's suffering as a consequence of that. And that's the driver for why I want to abstain from causing them harm. I want it to be good for me. You know, I want it to be good for me and for others, humans, the environment. But I also want it to be the right thing for them. And that's why it's fundamentally wrong at the end of the day. It's because of the experience that they have as a consequence of me doing what I'm doing. Okay. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, when you take when you take on like that kind of perspective, I can see where you're coming from. Obviously, like unless you're mentally ill, you wouldn't enjoy watching people like get hurt, especially like animals. Yeah. I think that when people are consuming like these products, they're not fully aware or if they are like it just flows right past you. Um, you're not you're not eating meat and saying like, oh, I just love the way the farmers treated the chickens <laughs> yeah, today. Right, right. Like you're not eating it in that sense. You're like, oh, I feel like I haven't chicken today. I'm just going to go ahead and eat it. Exactly. We're, we're disconnected from the process. And I guess we're so disconnected that we don't have to think about that. We go, oh, I like chicken. I'll buy that. We don't ever think to ourselves, hang on a minute. What am I paying for? What's going to happen as a consequence of me buying this? What does this mean for other chickens and other animals in general? We don't, we don't think about that. And that's the problem is that we're so disconnected and we're so removed from the process that morally we don't have to engage with these issues. We can just turn a blind eye. But, you know, fundamentally turning a blind eye to something doesn't mean that that problem no longer exists. It just means that we're ignoring it. Yeah. But it still prevails nonetheless. And so I think the most important thing we can do is firstly acknowledge that what's happening is wrong, contradicts our morals, which is what we've done together today, hopefully. And then the next thing, which is something you can only do on your own, is to connect those products with the violence that's occurring. So next time you're in a situation where you can buy a dead animal or an animal secretion, 
you look at that and you think about what you're paying for and then you become connected that's the thing to do and that's 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 i guess the next part of the process probably do you think you'll do that next time you're in a moment where you have that choice take a moment to reflect on that and see how it makes you feel yeah, I mean, every Fridays I'm Catholic, so we don't eat meat on Fridays. Fantastic. So like, I'm trying to, I'm, we're practicing that right now. Uh, I'll do that for you. I'll do that for you. You made some very interesting points. And, and not to sound facetious at the end, or, or to pull you on your words again. Don't do it for me. Do it for the animals. Do it for them, because I'm not the one who's suffering. I'm not the one who's harmed. They are. And so, do it for me, please, because I want you to. But also, more importantly, do it for them, because they're the real victims of of the choices that we make. Sounds good. Amazing. Thank you so much for the conversation. I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Pablo. Nice to meet you. Yeah.